What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. For today's video, we're taking it back to the basics, which is the caged system. Specifically, we'll be checking out how we can use the caged system to our advantage and helping us cover the whole fretboard. So let's go. Cool. So like today's video intro mentions, today's video is all about the caged system. Specifically, how we can use the caged system in helping us cover the whole fingerboard, right? I think for a lot of us, the cage system was a great intro to these movable shapes on the guitar. But the next question is, how can we apply it so that if we're in a key today, for example, D, how can we apply it to do something like this, where you're starting super low and then getting higher And that's all caged and connecting dots, right? So that's today's goal. Seeing the cage system, identifying the shapes, then seeing how we can shift so we have the full fingerboard at our disposal. Well, all right. Now let's do a review of our five shapes for our D major scale. One thing I really want you all to take notice of, and I'll mention it as well, is what's the highest note that we can approach as well as what's the lowest note that we can approach that now gives you all six strings in these five shapes at your disposal which is really important in helping you have the full fretboard at your disposal so our first shape our c shape d e f sharp g a b c sharp d right and now we can go higher, E, F sharp, G, A, meaning our fifth degree, our A, is our highest note that we can approach. Now we can go lower, C sharp, B, A, G, F sharp. Our third degree is our lowest note. Next up, our A shape. And again, let's take notice of our highest note that we can approach and our lowest note. Highest note, our B, our major sixth degree. Lowest note, our G, our fourth. Next up, our G shape. And again, what's our highest note and our lowest note? Highest note is our root. Lowest note, D, C sharp, B, our sixth degree now. Next up, our E shape. Also, I'm noticing when I'm looking at my monitor here, I'm lowering the volume because I don't want the buzz in the empty spaces. <laughs> so next up, our E shape. Our E is our highest note that we can approach, our second degree. C sharp, our lowest note. And finally now, our D shape. Fingering this one is kind of hard, but I do it a different way. I do three notes per string as opposed to four on the lowest note. So I'll play it like D, E, F sharp, A, G, B, C sharp, D. Highest note. 
our G, our fourth degree. And our lowest note, our root. Oh, that's actually a sus2 chord. <laughs> so right then and there, you saw the five shapes as well as our lowest notes, right? Now comes the fun part in how do we practice this? How do we take our five shapes and what's a way that we can practice it where it forces us to really understand the shapes as well as the lowest note? And this is something that at Berkeley for the final exam over the semesters was specifically in level one. So now that you know the five shapes, let's say yourself, I'm going to play now my D major scale starting from, let's say, the sixth degree. Let's do it one octave. I know from what we just saw our shape that lends itself the easiest would be our D shape. Sorry, our G shape. So now I would say to myself, all right, my sixth note is my B natural. I'm going to play now, starting from the B, ending on the B, but with the D major notes, right? B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. And if I want to go higher, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, Now, let's say, let's play D major scale starting from the fifth degree, our A. That leads you to two shapes. You can do your A shape. Right? Or you can do your C shape. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, and you want to go higher, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Now at this point, a lot of you guys are asking maybe, aren't these modes? Yes, they are. But for today's video and usually how I teach, I don't I want to separate this concept of starting a major scale from a different degree than the seven modes of the major scale. Right? So if anything from this part, I want you to take away the five shapes, our lowest note, and then when practicing, saying to yourself, I'm gonna play D major scale from one of the seven degrees, right? And that will slowly help you cover the full fingerboard as well as really give you a good understanding of the five shapes and how we can apply them in our practice routine. So now we've established a couple really great tips and tools to help us slowly expand our fingerboard, right? All by using cage, nothing out of the ordinary here. We've established our five shapes, right? The scales, as well as identifying what's our highest note, as well as what's our lowest note. And finally, how we can practice them. So we have the ability to say, I'm going to play my D major scale starting from my fourth degree, for example. G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. Right. Now, I guess the common question is, how do we use that to have the whole fingerboard at our disposal? And this is where the concept or how do you call it, maybe idea of shifts come into play. Slight finger movements that help you cover the fingerboard. So 
let's say to ourselves, we're going to start on our C shape. We're going to go up to our fourth degree. D, E, F sharp, G. Right here, knowing that our next note is an A, we're going to do a shift to our seventh fret of our D string A. And that brings us into our A shape. From here, we can climb up to our um, B, C sharp, D. And if we want to go higher, we can go to our E. And now, this is where the fun part really happens. Is if now we've climbed up one octave and went to our second degree, our E, we can now decide two things. Do we want to keep climbing up the scale? Or do we want to descend? And right there, we descended in our G shape. If that makes sense. So we climbed up in our C shape, ended up in our A shape, maybe kept climbing up in the top portion of our G shape, or we descended to now our root being 10th fret of the low E string. farther you can do the same build up but now when you get to this root shift to your 12th fret of low E to your second degree and now climb up your E shape descend now you're in your G shape Shift, now you're in your A shape, now you're in your C shape. So it's all about just a quick shift and for you to decide do you want to keep going up the scale or descending the scale. And this is more of the small detailed practicing where you're really emphasizing where do I want to go on the fretboard? Where are my notes, right? And where do I want to do this shift? At that point, when you feel super comfortable, then you'll be able to do stuff like not going in order. And so now you're sort of seeing the cage system as ways to help you maneuver across the fingerboard. Then, again, another one, you apply that to songs and you see the cage system as places where you can play chord progressions as well as soloing. So you can start super low, right, and then slowly build up higher using those cage systems as kind of checkpoints. And next thing you know, you will have you'll be able to see a song and have the full fingerboard at your disposal. And that is the power of the cage system. All right, guys, that's it for today's video, a definitive guide on how we can use the cage system to our advantage in helping us cover the full fingerboard on the guitar. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.